Neurological Disorders, a Growing Public Health Challenge, Part 2. In Part 2 of this lecture, we will examine some of the major neurological disorders present. What is Parkinson's disease? Well, Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disease of the CNS and basal ganglia, and it's characterized by a constellation of clinical manifestations. It includes a slowing down in the initiation and execution of movement, akinesia and bradykinesia, increase in muscle rigidity, mild tremors at rest, and slowness of movement, impaired and decreased balance, muscle coordination, and of course, postural reflexes. PD was first described in a classic e essay on shaking palsy by James Parkinson in 1817. Here you can see a photo from that particular uh, essay that he wrote. As the disease progressive, body movements such as walking and talking are also effective over time. Here are the classical triad of PD symptoms that we see clinically. We see tremor, rigidity, and bradykinesia. So I put these gears here because it really feels like the gears of the body become rusty and the muscles and everything become more and more difficult to move over time. Look at the prevalence of Parkinson's disease in Canada. It affects approximately one in every 500 people and more than 25 individuals will be diagnosed with this neurological disease each day in Canada. It is more common in men than women by a ratio of three to two, as, as shown here in PD cases in Canada as well in this chart. Parkinson's disease and a decline in dopamine levels. Well, as Parkinson's disease develops, when there is a loss of nerve cells in the brain, which produce the chemical neurotransmitter, dopamine, that transmits impulses between nerve cells in the brain to control body movements. Common signs and symptoms of PD include rigidity and tremors in the extremities and of the head as well, shake, mild shaking of the head, the individual also will often engage in very short, sort of shuffling gait, slow, monotonous, uh, slurred speech, reduced arm swinging when mobilizing. They often have that forward tilt to posture and that blank stare or blank expression on the face. Trap is a mnemonic for remembering the symptoms for PD, such as tremor, rigidity, akinesia, and bradykinesia, and of course, postural instability. Let's look at tremor. Well, tremor is often the first symptom of Parkinson's disease and is present in between 70 to 100% of all clients affected. It is often more prominent at rest and which can also be aggregated by emotional stress. You often see these clients having these pill rolling tremor in their hands as well. Rigidity occurs in over 90% of clients. Again, that analogy of sort of rusty gears, if you want, or spokes comes to mind of a cogwheel. It is characterized by slow jerky movements, that cogwheel rigidity caused by sustained muscle contraction in these clients. Bradykinesia is present in 80 to 100% of clients. And this involves the loss of automatic movements that become involuntary. Things like blinking of the eyelids, normal swinging of the arms while walking or ambulating, short and shuffling gait, difficulty speaking, difficulty with swallowing of saliva, stoop posture and mask-like appearance of face. What are the stages of Parkinson's disease? There are basically five um, primary stages. 
Uh, in the first stage, of course, it's the early stage, minimal symptoms. They don't usually affect one's ADLs or activities of daily living. Stage two, uh, it starts to affect ADLs. They take longer to complete, for example, combing one's hair, brushing one's teeth. In stage three, there we see some evidence of loss of balance and coordination. Uh, doing that, those carrying out those activities of daily living become more difficult over time. In stage four, it is nearly impossible to live alone without having assistance from others. And of course, in stage five is the final stage where the individual is typically confined to bed. Dementia, confusions, and hallucinations begin. What is MS? Multiple sclerosis for short. Well, MS is a chronic and progressive degenerative autoimmune disorder of the central nervous system, brain, and spinal cord. It is characterized by disseminated and demyelination of nerve fibers of the brain, spinal cord, and also the optic nerves of the eyes and inflammation of the gyosis, means scarring happening in the CNS. The prevalence of MS, I think it is notable um, that the global median prevalence is about 30 per 100,000 people, but ca Canadians have the highest prevalence of MS in the world, in fact. The Canadian prevalence is approximately 291 per 100,000 individuals. Why that is, we currently do not know. It is quite uh, prevalent, I would like to also add, in the prairie provinces such as uh, uh, Saskatchewan. MS is often diagnosed in young adults between the ages of 15 and 40. Younger children and older adults may also be diagnosed with this disease. Approximately 100,000 Canadians are, are living with MS currently and approximately four times more women are affected in, for, with this condition than men. Here you see some of the common symptoms of MS. Uh, sensory symptoms, motor function, visual impairments, of course, balance issues, uh, sexual dysfunction often occurs, uh, urinary issues, uh, pain and discomfort, and cognitive impairment. What is um, ALS? Well, it's also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, named after the famous baseball player, of course. It is defined as a progressive motor neuron disease that involves both the upper and lower motor neurons and is characterized by wasting of the muscles of the body resulting from the destruction of motor neurons in the brainstem and anterior gray horns of the spinal cord and degeneration of the pyramidal tracts. What is the etiology of ALS? Well, the exact etiology is still not known. That, 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 that's a very high number, 90 to 95%. And most cases are therefore uh, uh, labeled sporadic in nature with no known specific cause. However, potential risk factors that have been identified include family history, uh, cigarette smoking, exposure to heavy metals, such as lead, uh, exposure to radiation, and to expo uh, various neurotoxins, uh, and, and, uh, such as pesticides, and, and for individuals also who work in the plastic in industry. ALS prognosis, approximately 80% of clients diagnosed with ALS die within three to five years. After diagnosis, some notable exceptions include Professor Stephen Hawkins, who was diagnosed at age 21 and defined all odds by living until the age of 76 years. What is MG? Well, it's defined as a chronic disease of the neuromuscular junction in which an autoimmune process slowly destroys acetylcholine, abbreviated ACH, so it uh, destroys these receptors for acetylcholine at the postsynamic muscle here. So they're slowly destroyed. 
What are common symptoms of MG? Well, you see weakness of the eye muscles, eye and eyelid movements, uh, ptosis of eyelids, which can be unilateral or bilateral in nature, in other words, affecting one eye only or both eyes. There could be drooping of corner of the mouth, uh, difficulty swallowing, chewing, and talking. And muscles that control breathing and neck limb movement can also be affected with MG. What is Huntington's disease, abbreviated HD? Huntington's is a genetically transmitted chronic autosomal dominant disorder that affects both men and women equally and results in a devastating loss of all the neurological functions uh, eventually over time. Here you see a brain in the photo here with a client with HD versus a normal one. And with the HD brain, it is characterized by enlargement of the frontal horns, of the lateral ventricles in the brain, and atrophy or, sh or shrinking, if you wish, of the basal ganglia. There are five stages for HD. Uh, the first stage is the earliest stage. Uh, they're slightly lower performance, but they can perform ADL independently. In uh, number two, they still can't work, but at, at a decreased level. And they are overall mostly independent in terms of performing their activities of daily living. In stage three, they find it difficult to work and begin to require assistance with activities of daily living, such as shaving and, and so forth, or dressing themselves. Um, in stage four, they're unable to work and require major assistance with activities of daily living. And of course, in stage five is the final stage, full-time care is required for these individuals. The progression of HD. As the brain cells continue to die, a client with HD becomes less able to control their movements, recall events, make decisions, and control their emotions. What is dementia? Well, dementia is defined as a chronic and often progressive neurological disorder that results in a deterioration of mental processes. It is caused by a variety of diseases and injuries that affect the brain. Currently, there are over 100 different forms of dementia. Here you can see a diagram for a patient with Alzheimer's disease to the left. You can see the ventricles are enlarged and there is actually a shrinking of the brain in comparison to a normal brain, which is on the right of the screen. So let's explore some different types of dementia in, in more detail. There is also a form of dementia, which I like to point out here, uh, which is termed reversible dementia. Okay? And these are um, sort of acute in nature as opposed to chronic. And they may be reversible in, in, in nature. And some of the causes for these reversible dementias are shown in this mnemonic here. So if you look down on the left, the word dementia is spelled out. And of course, we, we begin with D. D stands for drugs. It may be due to depression or del uh, delirium. E is for endocrine uh, disorders or electrolyte imbalance. Uh, let's say post-operatively, patients sometimes suffer from potassium imbalance, for example, which, which may cause some uh, um, sort of uh, sort of dementia-like uh, symptoms. Uh, M is for multi-infarct or metabolic disturbances in the brain. E is for one's environment, like sensory deprivation. It also could be related to nutritional imbalances. T is for toxins, could be a tumor in the brain, trauma to the head, or even thy uh, various thyroid uh, disorders can also uh, have that uh, sort of uh, symptoms for reversible dementia, ischemia, infectious diseases, and of course, lastly, A is for alcohol. So let's explore some of these major types of dementia in more details. And first and foremost are, is, of course, Alzheimer's disease. The prevalence estimates here are 50 to 80% of all cases. And it was uh, first described 
by the German psychiatrist uh, Alois Alzheimer in 1907 while treating a 55-year-old female client. So AD uh, is a chronic and progressive degener degenerative disease of the brain. Um, there's often these plaque formation and there's a loss of connections between cells and cells death that occurs. Uh, age is the most critical risk factor here as only a small percentage of clients develop AD prior to the age of 60. Vascular dementia is probably the second most one, uh, most prevalent one that we see clinically, about 15 to 20 percent of all cases. Um, it can result from ischemic or ischemic hypoxia or, or hemorrhaging or bleeding, if you want, in, into the brain uh, caused by cardiovascular disease, uh, which results in reduced blood and oxygen supply to the brain uh, or via a blockage. Um, it can result from a single stroke, uh, which we refer to as an infarct, or, in, or from accumulation of multiple strokes as well. Dementia with Lewy bodies, which is clinically abbreviated DLB. DLB has features of both Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, and there are no known risk factors for this. It's associated with the presence of so-called Lewy bodies, uh, these are the deposits of, of these uh, sort of protein-like materials in the brain, which are abnormal uh, in the brain stem and, and other parts of the brain as well, the cortex and so forth. Parkinson's disease-related dementia, abbreviated PDD, small d, big D, uh, 2 to 5 percent. Uh, the key brain changes linked to Parkinson's disease and PDD are abnormal microscopic deposits, again, of these, of these proteins. Here's some, adjust, uh, here's some suggested additional videos related to dementia. Uh, the first one is how music, personalized music interventions and music therapy can benefit patients with dementia. Uh, the second one deals with living with dementia, and here there are various interviews that have been conducted uh, with staff from Ontario Shore Centre for Mental Health Sciences in Whitby, Ontario, dealing with um, uh, individuals with staff, uh, uh, caring for individuals with dementia, and also uh, uh, the creation of a clinical demonstration unit for dementia care and research, so how that came about and some of the uh, exciting opportunities here. Here's a suggested additional reading for you. Neurological disorders, a growing public health concern. Well, that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, part one and two related to neurological disorders. And I hope that you listen to others in this series related to the art and science of public health. Cheers.